Hello Amiga people, it's Chris and we're back with something else Amiga 600. This is my Amiga 600 with the A630 which is in my hand here. This is an A630 Rev2 that I purchased from RetroRewind.ca. It is made by Archie-Tech originally and there's an issue with it. Now it works fine but since I am a 321 uh, ROM in this I don't see the ROM screen. These were made for 3.1, just like the wonderful brother, the Furia. But, there's some new firmware out, and I want to attempt to flash it, and I'll probably blow it up, but I want to document the process, so if you're crazy enough and have a, a Xilinx JTAG programmer, you can do the same thing. But you need some 2.54 millimeter spaced pin headers. Now originally I did a 90 and I thought I'd keep it low but the floppy cable's in the way so you gotta go straight up. So we're gonna do that now. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Just soldered it in the bottom. I'm not even cleaning up flux. Now, I have to take this thing and match it up so I want my, my V-Ref is gonna be blue. So V-Ref is blue. Beep, and I'm going to verify those colors together by just holding it up. So we got VREF, green is ground, yellow is TCK, we have no init, it's skipped, then TD0 is orange, correct, TD1 is red, and TMS is brown. So we're ready on that front. I'm just going to plug this back in. Uh. Great. Now, i got to hook up my wonderful, always works, Xilinx programmer. This thing is just a turd. A just like that, we're Windows 7. She's hooked up down below. I uh, had a dead BIOS battery, go figure. Found a pair of glasses that I bought at the dollar store that I haven't seen in forever. Alright, I have a mouse. How to plug in the JTAG programmer was left on my screen. A630, red R2, RC5. Apply. Okay. So that took eight seconds. But to get to that point, I had to get a Windows 7 machine on the old Xilinx tools with this programmer piece of crap with the cable that works fine, but shoved it in there real hard. I guess the prongs are getting... who knows? Let's turn it back on and see what happens. Did we bork it or do we have the Amiga still? Because if we borked it, I'm still connected to it and I can reflash it. Two hours later. We borked it. It's dead. She's dead, Jim. I'm gonna grab that Rev4 file. Grab this Rev4 file. Programming device. This is the Rev4. Programming succeeded. Right click. Verify. Verify succeeded. Okay. And as I did that, the Amiga started booting when it got programmed. So it's a Rev4 on this one I need. There goes my card, Rev4. This had Rev2 on it. Now, I don't know, software-wise, I don't know. There's Workbench. Here's what I want to test. This is the problem with the A630. When I remove my hard drive, I need to remove the adapter. Okay, pull things out. Right here, Transcend 4 Gig Compact Flash. 3-2-1 ROM, it won't show anything on the ROM screen after 3-1. Maybe 3-1-4, I think, worked. But 3-2, there's the RGB to HDMI. Nada, we should be seeing the kick, the boing ball, right now. Okay, so you can see this is the right dude. Okay, just gotta kind of put it here. This camera freaks out. So, we're gonna program this. Programming the R5, executing command. Yeah, there we go. How's that for focus? Hope it's clear. Program succeeded. Verify. Verify succeeded. Great. Turn it off. Oh, 
Amiga's still running, but it locked up. Turn it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, good enough. Turn it back on. Programmer went green, so I'm still talking to the CPLD. I can always go back as long as I don't bump this cable, move, or the wind blows at three degrees west at two miles per hour. The compact flash card does not make any activity, therefore we have nothing. The Amiga normally would go click. There's nothing, there's no activity. This firmware does not work with it. So I gotta do another boundary chain. I gotta do it again. Initialize the chain. Yes. I gotta put R4 back on it. It'll guru in a second because it's got the right CPU code. There, CPU is done. Verify. It's got a guru. Watch. <laughs> so, I gotta do RC4 code. It still doesn't fix the issue. You gotta have 3.1 or 3.14 in your 600 to have a ROM screen. It works okay. You can get Amiga Workbench on it, and it's fine. I just it, the, what's the five code for then? What's the R5 code for? R5 code don't work. Four? Fine. What did I have on here? Of course Magic Workbench is going to show up when I'm trying to show stuff. What firmware is the R5 for? Is that for the Revision 3 with the FPU? There's a new one out, but this is working. Uh, it's almost as fun as the Furia. Programming is simple once you get the thing to, 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 to be, you know, to be stable. That's why I kept my Windows 7 machine. Still looks good. Still works fine. Everybody just went to newer stuff. Turn this off, stick my finger right in the fan and scare myself. Didn't hurt. I'm just a puss. Take this. Unplug this. See this little board comes out and goes in here for some science and different things. It adapts all these. It's just a thing. Alright, so that goes in my Furia box. I'll have to rename that to Xilinx box. I'm going to take this ROM out. I'm going to take my compact flash out and turn this on. So I have a boot device, but no boot device. Here's my hard drive. If this firmware were to work, I would see the Boing Ball right here. But I won't. I'm going to go back to a 3.1. Kickstar 3.1, no boot device. Well, no hard drive. See? Just shows up. Look at that. It works. My OS won't. Boom! 314. Works fine. So, there you go. That was a pretty crappy special effect, but I just swapped the PCs back, burned the ROM. And... So there you go. Here's my card, and if I turn this off, Turn this off, put this card in. Now I have another beef with this card. This adapter. And it'll boot fine. Or 314. Now I'm gonna be slapped with a libraries disc because 32 and whatever have the new libraries and I don't have them on here because it's, it's there then somewhere. The 314 libraries don't like the 32 software because it's gotta do its you can, if you have a modules disk, that this is going to endlessly try to boot. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Maybe I'll just get back to where I was. The whole endeavor was to flash this thing to fix this issue. Defective. lose power and just turned off all right if I could find my multimeter I would freaking measure stuff there it is this day this video is just see the nightmare of Amiga stuff good god ground myself on the ground this is the 12 volt 12.78 here's the 5 4.75 little low yeah And then it works.
I don't know what that is. Because if I take this out, it works totally fine. So it works fine. Great. Great. Now, since I'm back to the way I was, and it's working, let's put it Furia back in. Or, yeah, almost called it A630. Jesus, God. It's not bad. My RGB to HDMI is now set. I am in aspect mode, so I have four by three, and it didn't it didn't work. My it's not working. CPU's on, but it didn't give me a RAM. So that flash file sucks. I need the original one. I'm going to write somebody and get a dump of their A630. Yay! Interesting. A little quick find. Only the RAM is not working. 16 to 30. It's uh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just freeze because I have 11k of RAM left. I don't think it has enough left to. No, I have 21 bytes of RAM. Good lord, it's 334. Anyway, I flashed this again, hooked up the old programmer, got the version five stuff to work with the bad RAM. Messaged Architect on the old face booger. And, uh, yeah, waiting to hear back. Sent some screenshots of what's going on with this. And it still works, it's just no memory. Well, that defeats the purpose of the whole damn thing. So, I asked for the original firmware and a version 2, version 3, just in case maybe I identified some weird bug that not a lot of people were flashing. I don't know. Don't know anybody else that has these things that has a JTAG programmer that could sniff the firmware off of. Should I have backed it up first? Yeah, eight, nine, ten. It's eleven o'clock at night there right now. Maybe seven or eight, ten, eleven o'clock at night maybe. So I'll wait till tomorrow and see what I see. So as you can see, it still works. It just has no memory. Like I have memory, but it's just it's not a lot. It's like Amiga one thousand memory. Number one, I'm in a high res laced on HDMI, and I got a bunch of icons on my desk and a whole bunch of crap in startup that I load for DOS drivers, PCMCIA. All sorts of crap, but anyway, we're going to wait and hear back from Architect and see what they say in the morning, and I'll keep you posted. Till then, thanks for watching. Funny, you bastard.